performative language the problem of performative language brings to focus issues concerning meaning and effects of language it leads to questions about identity and the nature of the subject the concept of performative utterance was developed in the 1950s by the british philosopher j l austin he proposed a distinction between two sorts of utterances constative utterances and performative utterances constative utterances describe a state of affairs and are true or false performative utterances perform the action they designate literary critics have embraced the idea of performative as one that helps to characterize literary discourse Theorists have long asserted that we must attend to what literary language does as much as to what it says. Literary utterance does not prefer to prior state of affairs and is not true or false. It creates the state of affairs to which it refers. It brings into being characters and their actions. Literary works bring into being ideas, concepts which they deploy. the performative brings to center stage an active world making use of language which resembles literary language and help us to conceive literature as an act or event the performative breaks the link between meaning and the intention of the speaker for what i perform with my words is not determined by my intention but by social and linguistic conventions since literary utterances are also events where the intention of the author is not thought to be what determines the meaning the model of the performative seems highly pertinent derrida's performatives the possibility of being repeated in new circumstances is fundamental to the nature of language anything that could not be repeated in a non serious fashion would not be language but some mark inextricably tied to a physical situation the possibility of repetition is basic to language and performatives in particular can only work if they are recognized as versions of or quotations of regular formulas austin sets aside as anomalous non serious or exceptional particular instances of what derrida calls a general iterability that should be considered fundamental to language general or fundamental because for something to be sign it must be able to be cited and repeated in all sorts of circumstances including non serious ones language is performative in the sense that it doesn't just transmit information but performs acts by its repetition of established discursive practices or ways of doing things Derrida also relates the performative to the general problem of acts that originate or inaugurate acts that create something new if every utterance is both performative and constative the relation between what an utterance says and what it does is not necessarily harmonious the secret who knows is produced by an act of supposing which moves the secret from the place of the object someone knows a secret to the place of the subject the secret knows the constitutive is language claiming to represent things as they are to name things that are already there and the performative is a rhetorical operations the acts of language that undermine this claim by imposing linguistic categories bringing things into being organize the world rather than simply pre- representing what is we can identify here what is called an aporia between performative and constitutive language an aporia is the impasse of an undecidable oscillation the only way to claim that language functions performatively to shape the world is through a constitutive utterance such as language shapes the world but contrary ways there is no way to claim the constitutive transparency of language except by a speech act the propositions which perform the act of stating necessarily 
claim to do nothing but merely display things as they are. Yet if you want to show the contrary that claims to represent things as they are, in fact impose their categories on the world, you have no way to do this except through claims about what is or is not the case. Butler's Performatives Butler's Performatives announces the emergence of a performative theory of gender and sexuality in feminist theory and in gay and lesbian studies. Butler's gender trouble takes issue with the notion that a feminist politics requires a notion of feminine identity, of essential features which women share as women and which give them common interests and goals. For Butler, on the contrary, the fundamental categories of identity are cultural and social productions, more likely to be the result of political cooperation than its condition of possibility. They create the effect of the natural and by imposing norms, they threaten to exclude norms who don't conform. In Gender Trouble, Butler proposes that we consider gender as performative, in the sense that it is not what one is, but what one does. Your gender is created by your acts, in the way that a promise is created by the act of promising. You become a man or a woman by repeated acts, which, like Austin's performatives, depend on social conventions, habitual ways of doing something in a culture. Just as there are regular socially established ways of promising or giving orders, so there are socially established ways of being a man or being a woman. This does not mean that gender is a choice, a role you put on as you choose clothes to put on in the morning. That would suggest that there is an ungendered subject prior to gender who chooses whereas in fact to be subject at all is to be gendered. Nor should the performativity of gender be thought as a singular act, something accomplished by one particular act. Rather, it is the reiterative and citational practice, the compulsory repetition of gender norms that animate and constrain the gendered subject, but which are also the resources from which resistance, subversions and displacements are forged. To be a subject at all is to be given this assignment of repetition and an assignment which we never quite carry out according to expectation, so that we never quite inhibit the gender norms or ideals we are compelled to approximate. In that gap, in the different ways of carrying out the gender's assignment, lie possibilities of resistance and change. For Austin, the concept of performative helps us to think about a particular aspect of language, neglected by prior philosophers. For Butler, it is a model of thinking about crucial social processes where a number of matters are at stake, the nature of identity and how it is produced, the functioning of social norms, the fundamental problem of what today we call agency in English, how far and under what conditions can I be responsible subject, who chooses my acts, and the relationship between the individual and social change. Austin is interested in how the repetition of a formula on a single occasion makes something happen. For Butler, this is a special case of the massive and obligatory repetition that produces historical and social realities. This difference, in fact, brings us back to the problem about the nature of the literary event, where there are also two ways of thinking of it as performative. We can say that the literary work accomplishes a singular specific act, it creates that reality which is the work and its sentences accomplish something in particular in that work. For each work, one can try to specify what it and its parts accomplish. Just as one can try to spell out what is promised in a particular act of promising, this one might say is the Austenian version of the literary event. The concept of the performative brings together a series of issues that are crucial to theory. First, how to think about shaping the role of language? Do we try to limit it to certain specific acts where we think we can say with confidence what it does 
or do we try to gauge the broader effects of language as it organizes our encounters with the world second how should we conceive of the relation between social conventions and individual acts third how should one conceive of the relation between what language does and what it says this is the basic problem of the performative can there be a harmonious fusion of doing and saying or is there an unavoidable tension here that governs and complicates all textual activity finally how in this postmodern age should we think of the event whether the image corresponds to a reality or not the mediatic event is a genuine event to be reckoned with the model of the performative offers a more sophisticated account of issues that are often crudely stated as a blurring of the boundaries between fact and fiction and the problem of literary event of literature as act can offer a model for thinking about cultural events generally